Hello, grade two. How are you doing? Um, I'm here in our classroom today taking this video for you. So I hope that you can follow along at home. Um, we're going to be continuing our science investigation about buoyancy and floating and sinking. So our investigation question for today is how does shape affect floating? So we're going to be testing which shape floats better. So last time we were testing materials, we were seeing do different materials float better than others? And most of us found that the plastic materials floated really well. So our second investigation is going to involve some clay or Play-Doh, um, a piece of tin foil, and then some water to test in. So you can pause the video now to get those. Okay, so I want you to make a prediction about which shape will be the best for floating. So if I were to make a little boat out of this clay that I have, what shape should I make it into? Would it be best if it was big and thick? Would it be best if it was flat? What sort of shape should I put this clay into to make it float the best? And not only float, but be able to hold a load since boats normally have things on them. And so they need to be able to hold weight and float at the same time. So I want you to experiment with your clay or Play-Doh by putting it into the shapes you think will work the best. And don't forget, as scientists, we make a prediction first. So on a piece of paper near you, I want you to make a prediction of what shape is going to float the best, okay? So I'm gonna do that back here. So you're gonna write prediction on your paper and then draw a picture. So let's say you think that your boat should be kind of like this shape. Um, you're, and you're gonna label that as clay, okay? So make your prediction of what shape you're going to test first, okay? So you're probably gonna need to pause the video here to write down your prediction and then test it. So pause this video, make the first shape, and then test it out and observe what happens. Um, if you're not able to do this at home, you can watch me um, experiment, but it, it'll be so much better if you do it at home as well. So um, I have a piece of clay and one of the popular things that I saw the kids from last year do and the years before is um, make it into a, something that looks like a boat. So often they'll take a big chunk of clay. So I'm gonna test out something kind of like this shape. So kind of like a what I would imagine is a raft or something. So I'm kind of putting it into like a, a shape like this, let's say, okay? So I kind of have it to shape like a little bit like a boat and then it's flat. So I'm gonna test this in the water. And it did not float, which means my prediction was wrong. So I want you guys to try this a couple different times and the way to learn is to fail at it a few times. So you're not gonna get the right shape right off the bat, and that's where the learning comes in because then you get to have that aha moment when you figure it out. So I would encourage you to stop the video here, test as many different shapes as you can, and parents just totally back off and let this exploring happen. The, the point isn't to be right, the point is to learn. And we'll finish the video with the correct answer. So go ahead and try that out now. Welcome back. So I hope you were able to test lots of different shapes. Um, I am going to now reveal the shape that will be the best for floating. So I hope you tested your designs out because if you just watch me give you the answer, that's super boring. So the shape that I'm going to make, it's called a pinch pot. And so I'm actually making the clay kind of thin out. So I want it to be kind of thin, not so thin that it would break easily, but I just want it to be kind of thin. And then I'm going to give it this sort of bowl shape here. Okay, so you can see I'm kind of making what we would call a pinch pot. I'm pinching it into a little pot or bowl shape, okay? So here I have pinched it, okay? So one of the features of my boat is that the bottom is rounded Okay, so the weight is spread out. So I'm gonna test this design now. Oops. 
and you can see that it does float. Now the lower your sides are, the more water can get in, and if water gets in, it's not able to float as well. So try making this shape, gently place it in, and there you go, you can see that my boat is floating in the water. So that's an interesting observation. We need to make sure we write down what has happened. So we're going to write down our observations. So I want you on that same piece of paper to write observation. Okay, so you've tested a couple designs and now it's time to show which one worked the best. So here's our water, and I'll do it in a different color. The design that worked was shaped like this. Okay, so we'll take this one out. It wasn't beautiful on top, but that's kind of the shape that ended up working out. So I want you to draw the shape in the end, that pinch pot shape. So that's important. We're gonna have to talk about that in a minute, but first we're going to test our second shape test, and that's of the tin foil. So this time we're trying to do the opposite. We are trying to make this sink. So we made this thing, this material originally sank and we had to change it to make it float. This material originally floats and we need to make it sink. So again, I want you to make a prediction. This is not plastic. So this is made out of metal, a metal called tin. So it goes against our theory that metals will only sink because this material if I it floats very easily so you can test that out if you haven't tested it yet so the tin foil is going to, to float it's very um, floatable or buoyant now we want to make it sink so first please write a prediction what do you think the shape will need to be to float Okay, so if you're making a prediction, what shape do you think the tin foil will need to be to sink? I'm gonna predict that it's gonna need to be in a really tightly crumpled up ball. And of course I'm gonna label it as foil. So I want you to make a prediction. What shape do you think will be the one that ends up sinking? And then of course it's time to test your design. So um, make your prediction, draw your picture that you're gonna test, and then get started. So I'm going to test my design while you test yours and I said I think it's going to need to be tightly crumpled up because I remember when the clay was crumpled up it sank. So I wonder if the tin foil crumpled up will sink as well. Let's see. It doesn't. Look at that. Even if I try to hold it down it just floats right back up. So my design was wrong which means I need to keep testing until I find the right the solution. Hmm, what if I try making it into like a long skinny line? So I'm gonna try to open it back up. And of course, while I'm doing this, you're testing your own theories as well. So what if I turn it into like a skinny line like this? Still floating, hmm. So I hope you guys are testing a couple different designs here. You can pause the video to test as many as you and your siblings can think of, and then come back when you're ready for the answer. Welcome back. All right, now, this was actually a bit of a trick question because the way to get this foil to sink is to use the weight of the water. So this foil is not heavy enough to sink, and it's, just so floatable. So the way to get it to sink is to actually put the weight of the water on top of it. And so the weight of the water is actually holding it down. It is kind of floating a little bit, probably because there's a bit of holes in it, but if you kind of spread it out along the bottom, the weight of the water on top of it is holding it down. Um, it's still not working great, but it's better. So these are two interesting theories about the shape affecting how how buoyant or floatable something is. So what do you think we learned from this? Don't forget to write your observation for sorry, don't forget to write your observation for the tinfoil to show what happened 
So our observation for the tin foil was that it needed to be in a flat shape under the water so that the water pushed it down to stay. So don't forget to draw that out. Okay, so now it's time to talk about what happened. Remember, as scientists, we don't just do the experiment. We have to talk about what happened and why we think that happened. So what do you think we learned from this experiment? We noticed that we had to spread the shape out both times. Why did it need to be spread out? So why do you think that that mattered? The boat had to be spread out along the surface of the water in order for it to become buoyant. So what do you think? Make your predictions now. If you're ready for the answer, here's what we're learning about. Buoyancy is not related to how heavy or light something is. So it's really easy to get into the way of thinking that if something is heavy, that means it will sink. And if something is light, that means it will float. We actually proved both of those wrong today. We made a heavy thing float and a light thing sink, which means these are not true. Okay, it's really easy to assume that because when you tested your objects, the, all of the heavy ones sank and all of the light ones floated. And so it kind of seems like that's what's happening, but it's not. What's actually happening and the way that buoyancy works is that the weight needs to be spread out across the surface of the water. So you'll remember when we studied water, we talked about how the water molecules really love each other. And so they want to stick together. Remember we talked about that, how when we put the drops of water on the penny, they really wanted to stick together. Well, this is the same water. It wants to stay together. But when something comes piercing through the molecules, they have to separate. So in order to stay on top of something, it needs to rest on top. So we can think of a few examples of heavy things that can float based on their shape. Think about a boat. A boat is very heavy, heavier than a rock for sure. But a rock will sink and a boat will float. So that has to do with how spread out it is. So if you think of a rock, Let's say the rock weighs five pounds. That's a really heavy rock. All five pounds are packed into this tiny spot. So even though it's small, all of the weight is put in one spot. And let's think of a boat. Let's say this boat weighs a thousand pounds. That's way heavier than the rock. But actually I should draw this to scale to show. Okay, so if I have this big of a boat, see the difference of the weight is spread out through this whole area. And the shape is also important. See how this is the same shape of our pinch pot. And if you look up pictures of boats, they have this same shape on the bottom. So this is spreading out the weight. Some weight's here, some weight's here, and it has this whole surface area to hold the weight of the boat. So instead of all of the weight being in one small spot, it's spread out throughout the whole thing. So even a really heavy thing can flow if it has the right shape. And so we learned today that shape is really important when we're talking about boats and buoyancy. And that's why boats are mostly the same shape as each other because it's an important shape for floating. So that's kind of it for this video. Um, the next one we're gonna be building boats and talking about how to add things to them that make them more productive. So I hope you like this video and if you wanna tune into the next one now or later, I'll see you there.